did not uh, execute the way we needed to in a game like that and, and really never overcame the second quarter. Uh, lost to a very good, very well-coached North Alabama team um, on the road in Florence. It was a tough day. Uh, the thing that I am uh, was took away from that game that I'm very, very proud of uh, is that our players continued to play hard uh, throughout the game and in the, in the last – under a minute left in the game, DeCoven Ware made a big time play on defense. We were able to score a defensive touchdown as North Alabama was trying to go down and, and get 50 points on the board. So I thought that was a, <clears throat> a, a true positive coming out of that game uh, and was very, very uh, tough in the locker room. And I was very, very proud of how our young men handled that. You know, it means a lot to them the way they're feeling right now. It's been a tough uh, few weeks. Uh, it's only going to make our program stronger in the future, uh, but it, it's been very, very tough right now, um, and we got it. Same old, same old. No, no reason to uh, stay down about it. We've got to turn around and play a, a tough Valdosta team who's thinking about going to postseason. All those things coming in this weekend for homecoming, and uh, I hope everybody will come out and support this team because they've they've had to fight through a lot of adversity so far. They're staying together. They're they're still playing hard. And uh, we're going to try to continue to do the same thing this Saturday and, and, and get a win at home. With that, I'll answer anything you got. This uh, this rivalry with Valdosta, talk about the uh, from the, your time as a coach. Talk about the the intensity that that comes with this rivalry between the two teams. I mean, I I think it's there's a lot of them in this league. You know, it's uh, we had one last week. We had one. Uh, uh, the week before, it seems like every game turns into a rivalry right now. Um, you know, I, I think there's, it's going to be intense. I think right now, though, what you got to understand is where we are uh, as a football team right now. Our family is uh, – we know we got a tough opponent coming in here. We're more concerned about us right now. We're trying to get uh, people ready to play. Um, we're out a lot of starters, as Matt alluded to, but that's – I like to say it's football, but it's been one of those years. You know, it's just been one of those things. Um, so – uh, we've got to play our best football game uh, this week in order to get a win. We understand that, and um, we're going to do everything in our power to do that. We're Right now, we're a pretty tired team. Uh, we're emotionally drained. We're, we're tired. I gave them yesterday off. I'm giving them today off like normal, but we didn't we didn't meet yesterday. Uh, we just we, we did a lot of meeting after the game was over in Florence, and we're just trying to get our guys back and try to get them refreshed. You know, we didn't have an open new week this year um, schedule. The way it fell, just the way it was, um, that might have hurt us, especially with these injuries. But hey, hindsight's twenty twenty, and um, but we need to get refreshed and we need to try to bounce back and put a good effort forward on Saturday. Coach, you talk about the injuries and you talk about you know just being able to overcome adversity with that. All. Mm -hmm. um, how much have you really talked with the with the players, especially you know more directed towards the younger guys or even juniors that might be backups? Well, just the mentality of being able to, you know, pick up the flag and just keep moving forward and opportunities, you know, be able to get an opportunity. We've talked a ton about it. Um, you know, we've talked a ton about it. Um, you know, um, it's been discussed. We, uh, you know, I, I don't want to make – I'm not making excuses. I mean, we've, it is what it is. We, we hadn't played well in the last month. We've got to play better. Uh, we've played well at the Spurts. Uh, you know, we started out Saturday, got a turnover on the first possession, scored our first play on offense. We're up 7 nothing. Second quarter, terrible, terrible quarter. Both sides of the ball. Didn't make enough first downs on offense, gave up big plays on defense, uh, dropped a punt, uh, snap, dropped a snap on special teams. That's, those kind of things can't happen, big games. Um, we got to play better. And, uh, I think that there's no question what, what this has taught our team, and especially our young players is, you know, I think that, we got to a point where we were sitting there trying to take things for granted. Like, well, we're Delta State. We're going to come out here, and I'm a freshman. We'll go to the postseason four years and blah, blah, blah. And my time's coming. No, it's not. Your time's now. I mean, <laughs> we got to do it now, you know. So, um, I think it's. I think that, that message has hit home and, and will serve us uh, good in the future. But, you know, right now, we're not thinking about the future. We're thinking about we got 23 seniors that are going to go through senior day. That's getting lost in the shuffle because we got homecoming Saturday. It's also senior day. We got 23 seniors uh, that still have a chance. Since I've been here in three years, they've got a chance to close out this season, okay, with three winning seasons in a row. They've got a chance to go 23 and nine in three seasons with a conference championship in 2014. Every one of them have a chance to graduate 
Nine of them are going to graduate in December. One of them is going to graduate with his master's in December. So, so we're kind of turning our focus towards them and playing for those guys because they, they've given a lot to this program. They've left their stamp and their legacy on this program. They've helped change it back to where it needs to be, you know. And the thing I'm going to say is if there's a way that we can find a way, we're going to give it everything we got on Saturday. There's a way to find a way to win this football game, and then we'll have no problems getting up from Mississippi College. That's an in-state rivalry. And we can go down there and get that football game. We would go 7-4. and four. With all that we've been through, if we can go 7-4 and four, and that's as bad as it's ever going to get at Delta State, I'll take it. I can handle that. Because then we can go out and recruit and say, yeah, yeah, we fell back. This is what happened. This kid went down, this kid went down, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, and by the way, we were 7-4, and four, and everybody's upset about that. That'd be a heck of a deal. Now, that's easier said than done. we got to go do it. But that's, that's what I'm holding on to. And I'm holding on to the fact that our players haven't given in. Our players are still fighting. Our players are still working hard. And that gets me excited as a coach, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, there was a, deal, there was a thing that happened Saturday with DeCoven Ware, who is a senior. DeCoven Ware played about 90 snaps on defense Saturday. Okay, DeCoven Ware is a senior. DeCoven Ware has always been a guy that I thought had a lot of talent but has never quite fully reached his potential because I never thought he had truly bought into what he can be. Well, he played his tail off for 90 snaps in the rain, in the cold, with a bum shoulder that they had to put together back at halftime. I don't know how Dave and them did it. We're down 43 to 10, 41 seconds left. Okay, they're about to go in and score 50. He knocks the stew out of their running back. We scoop and score. He comes to the sideline, tears in his eyes, says, Coach, I'll never give up playing for this university. I love this play. I love you. Love this university. And to me, that's what coaching's all about. It's not about how many games you win. It's not about how many rings you win. It's about can you touch a young man and get him to be better than he thinks he is. And we touch that young man. If anything else came out of Saturday that was positive, that was very, very positive. The other positive thing was we had a local boy, uh, Jared Hunt from Cleveland, who stepped in as backup Mike Linebacker. Jamel Dennis goes down uh, in the first half, and this is a guy who wasn't even traveling four weeks ago. He comes in, played his tail off. I don't know how many tackles he had. don't know his stats. I just know I watched his effort and the way he played, and just it was his time. He played his tail off, you know. So those are positives we can take from that game. What can you say about this senior group? Obviously, like you said you came in three years ago. It can yeah. be tough for those freshmen that come in, you know, now new coach, what's going to happen moving right. forward. For the guys that stuck around and bought right. into the system, what can you say about those guys? Now, they always have a special place with me. They always are because, the, you know, this is the <clears> – well, I say that for the most part. I still didn't recruit a couple of these guys. They were already here. But for the most part, those seniors, we recruited every one of them. So, um, you know, they'll always have a special place with me with what they've been able to, to accomplish. They believed in me. Uh, they trusted me. I trusted them. And um, I've seen them grow up, you know. And that's, 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 that's what's so special about athletics is you get to see and what's special about the game of football, you know. Uh, I always say, you know, it, <clears throat> you, know you, can, you can tell a lot about a man, but you can tell more about a man in that A-gap. <laughs> and these suckers have all been in that A-gap. And it's, it's real down in there, as you know. And... They've been in there, they fought, they've had adversity, they've had people doubt them, they've had they've been on the high, and they now they've experienced some lows, and they're still still fighting, still standing, still working, and I appreciate it very much. Coach, as far as Valdosta from from the, some of the things you know about them, what do you expect from them offensively and defensively? They'll be good. I mean they're huge, huge. Uh, Cedric O'Neill. <laughs> Running back's probably one of the best in this league. Has been for about the last, I think, 16 years or something like that. It seems like he's played there forever. Uh, he's a good player. Um, very hard to tackle. Uh, they got another transfer quarterback. He's dangerous back there. Uh, seems like they do that every year. Coach Dean just keeps rolling out and gets transfer quarterbacks and always does a good job with them. Defensively, they're very, very big. I'm talking about 240-pound linebackers. And um, they just created – what, four, they had four interceptions on Saturday against West Alabama. Two, they returned for touchdowns. One, they set up another quick touchdown. So they're dangerous as they can be, as always. And, you know, Valdosta, they're going to want to come in here um, and get after us, and that's what they do. I mean, they're smelling, you know, postseason. You know, they're, they're still, you know, playing for the playoffs and everything else. So uh, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, a very tough challenge on us. But we're excited about that challenge. We, we want another challenge like that, you know, because – I feel like we've got a bunch of winners in our locker room. They're used to it, and, and that's Gulf South football. That's the way it's supposed to be.
Mitch, anything? No, Coach, uh, any update on Tyler Sullivan? No, no updates. No updates. I don't. You know, I I don't know. I I, I we hope we hope he'll come back, um, but we're not gonna you know we're not gonna rush anything like that. So, um, you know, don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I think he's next appointment might be next week or something like that. David would know more about that. We'll find out then. Uh, Coach Tyler Cameron had the roughest game of his uh, young career. Uh, he did. Kind of use that to kind of build him up. Is it? Like he, a little bit. he did. He struggled a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's it's he he can learn a lot from it. You know, uh, I think the biggest thing that he learned is um, college football is a heck of a lot different from high school football. And he played at a very high level of high school football, but in college football, it's week to week, and the preparation has to change. Uh, you have to prepare. Very, that's why it's so difficult for quarterback, especially in our offense, to play he's so well because we put so much on him. And um, you know, I, I thought he struggled a little bit. Now, now some of it, was, some a lot of it was his fault. Some of it wasn't his fault. You know, we had a lot of guys out there struggling offensively on Saturday that we we saw the tape. But um, I think he can learn from it. He can learn a lot of things from this film, and and that's what we're going to get to. And um, you know, he's going to watch it, and we're going we're going to still review that film with him and, and see how he can grow because he's going to have to play a lot better this week. Uh, Coach, one of the things that's kind of controversial in all college football is the targeting rule. <laughs> hey man, I we had we had two of them called. They had one called against them. I, I can't. I don't know what targeting is anymore. Uh, I just know that at our level of football, when you don't have instant replay, I do not see how you can have a a targeting violation unless it's just. Uh, I'm not gonna say blatant because they thought those two were blatant and those. Two, <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to comment on officiating this week, but I, I I think it's tough. I think it's I think it's putting officials in a bad situation. I think it's uh, putting I think it's making the target area go lower and lower, which you're going to see more leg injuries. You're going to see more ACLs get torn and things like that. I mean, it's a contact sport. I'm sorry, not everybody has to play it, you know, and that's just the way it is. Um, but I think you're going to see. More defensive players get hurt now because they're putting their set, they're putting their body in poor positions, you know, to try to avoid targeting. Um, I understand taking a guy out that's defenseless. I don't, I don't think there's no place in the game. I think there's no place in the game for cutting. I think they ought to outlaw cutting, to be honest with you, because I think cutting people in their legs, I just don't think there's any place for that. And we cut just like everybody else does, and once they take it out, we won't. But they're not going to take that out. But uh, I just think the targeting, both of those were – to say we're targeting those were both questionable, and that's about as nice as I can say that they were questionable, both of those plays. Coach, just going off of that, I'm just, I'm just curious, I mean, how much does that change just the way you're tackling? I mean, you said players, defensive players are putting their themselves in positions now where they might get hurt. I mean, more well, you're leading with, your, leading with your shoulders more, yeah. and, and, and as Dave is in here, he can tell you we've had a lot more shoulder injuries this year. Um, you lead with your shoulder more. Um, here, here's, the, here's the biggest problem. Here's the biggest problem, in my opinion. When I played – football back in the day when I first started playing football it took you about three days to get used to your helmet because your helmets were heavy and it took you about three days and nobody got a lot of concussions back then now you pick up a helmet it's like putting on a baseball cap I mean it really is they made them lighter and they're talking about their aerodynamic and they're, they're making them lighter every pad is lighter and every and these guys are getting bigger because now we're understanding how to train more we're understanding how to get guys bigger and faster and those things so as players get bigger and the equipment gets lighter, the collisions get more and more and more violent. And that's what's happening. That's why people are getting concussions. That's why people are getting injuries. I think they need to go back and look at how they're manufacturing making helmets. I really do. I think we, I think there's nothing wrong with making a heavier. You know, used to you put thigh boards on those thigh pads were about this big around. Now you look at guys and they're not even wearing thigh pads. They're just putting a little – because they want to be faster, you know. And I don't know. It's if Football, I love the game, but – they're trying to control, they're trying to take a lot of things out of it. It's still a contact sport, and it's not for everybody, and I understand that. But, uh, you know, we try to teach safe tackling methods. We teach gator roll method and all the stuff that the Seahawks are teaching now, but it's a lot more shoulder-oriented because of the targeting and to keep the head out of there. You know, I just think that sometimes a guy's coming in there, all of a sudden he's got to move his head out of the way. Well, he's put himself in a more vulnerable position to get hurt just because he's trying to avoid a penalty and help his team and not get ejected, you know. But I don't think there's any way you can have targeting without instant replay. I just don't.
you know, maybe maybe our conference needs to try to look at that. But I'm sure we'll discuss those things in the offseason. Because I, I just thought that both of those were very questionable on Saturday. And two young men, um, you know, had to sit out because of it. And they weren't trying to hurt anybody. They weren't trying to be malicious, you know. So, great questions. Miss Christie, anything? Uh, anything on the playoffs? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I think uh, you know I don't know. There's some scenarios that maybe we could get. It. I don't know. I don't. I don't worry about it. I've looked at Valdosta and just worried about winning Senior Day. Yeah, I mean people are telling me that they've looked at it, but you know the thing about it is if we've got to use the playoffs to get. I mean you shouldn't have to use that to get our guys motivated. We we get a chance to go play again together. You know I got seniors playing their last home game. It's homecoming. Um, it's a chance for us to have a winning season which would be a great mark, great uh, accomplishment. A lot of teams don't get to do that, so we hadn't really talked about it anymore. Uh, not going to. We're just going to worry about getting better and focusing on uh, getting some of these guys back healed up, hopefully, and hopefully we can go out and compete well against Valdosta State.